Welcome to Prejame Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 31, Explicit Interface Implementation. In the previous session, we learned basics around interfaces. In this session, we will understand explicit interface implementation. Let's look at an example. Let's flip back to Visual Studio. In the previous session, we have understood that we can create an interface using interface keyword. Let's say I want to create interface I1. And this interface is going to contain a member called interface method. And we know that interface members cannot have access modifiers and they are public by default. And interfaces cannot have implementations, only declarations. Okay. Now, if this program class implements this interface I1, then the program class has to provide implementation for that interface method. So let's go ahead and provide the implementation. So public void interface, you know, just to avoid any errors in typing, let's copy that. And if your class is implementing the interface member, the signature has to match exactly to that of the method signature in the interface. Now, so let's go ahead and implement this. So console.writeLine. Let's call this i1 interface method. OK. And we know that in order to invoke this method, we can create an instance of our program class. And we can just say p dot interface method this is what we have learned in the previous session okay so an interface contains uh, you know a method declaration which your class in you know your class is going to implement that interface and then you can create an instance of that class invoke that interface method okay we have seen this in the previous session now let's say i have another interface interface i2 and it happens so that even this interface has got a method which is exactly similar to i1 okay and your class is inheriting from both of the interfaces okay now this class is inheriting from i1 and i2 and if you look at i1 it has got interface method and i2 it has got interface method which is exactly similar and your class is inheriting both the interfaces and now this class has provided implementation for the interface method. Now, which one of the method do you think you have implemented here? Are you implementing I1 interface? I mean, interface 1 method or interface 2 method? So there is an ambiguity. But Visual Studio, I mean, the .NET thinks that the class has implemented both of the methods. Okay, you know, when it looks at this, okay, all right, this program class has satisfied, you know, the rule that uh, interface method needs to be implemented. If you look at this, the signature is similar to this and this. Okay, so both of the interfaces think, okay, the class is implementing this interface method. So it doesn't give us any compile time error. So if I go ahead and build that, you don't actually get a compiler error. But then when you actually print this, you know, when I say p.interface method, which method am I calling? There is no clarity on that. Okay, so there's there's definitely a little bit of confusion. So obviously, if a class is inheriting from two interfaces, and if those interfaces have got same method names, then it makes sense, you know, to use explicit interface implementation so that we know which interface method we are calling. Okay, for example, if I do this, look at this. If I want to call, let's say, interface one method to be a little clear, I can say p and then typecast that to interface i1 using the typecast operator and then we can go ahead and invoke the interface method now since we are typecasting this object into interface 1 and we call interface method we know that we are trying to invoke this interface method and similarly if i want to be in a position to invoke interface 2 method I can do this. Now look at this. 
if I am calling interface 2 method or interface 1 method since we only have one implementation you know only this instance will be called and it doesn't make sense you know it's a little ambiguous here okay so that's when we actually go for explicit interface implementation and the way we do it if you want to explicitly implement this interface method there are two changes that you have to do one when you are explicitly implementing an interface member you are not allowed to use the access modifier and number two you have to use the interface name and then dot the method name within that interface which you are implementing so now this class is said to be expl explicitly implementing interface one method similarly if you want to do the same thing for your interface two all you do is copy paste that and change this to i2 and just to make a difference you know print the message as i2 interface method call now if you look at this okay we are saying program p is equal to new program p typecasted to be of type i1 and then we call interface method interface method now if we go ahead and run you can see that as expected interface 1 method called interface 2 method call now by looking at your definition of your class you can clearly say okay this is the interface 1 method and this is the interface 2 method why because you are explicitly stating where is this interface method coming from okay but another thing to keep in mind when you explicitly implement an interface method one thing which you cannot do is you cannot say p dot interface method because look at this when i say dot the intellisense doesn't show interface method because you know when i when i am in a position to say p dot interface method which method should i be calling so there will be definitely ambiguity there that's why you know visual studio will not i mean dot net will not allow you to do that and in case if you try to do that just by copy pasting you will actually get a compiler error look at that it does not contain a definition for interface method okay so when you explicitly inter implement an interface member the only way to invoke those explicitly implemented interface members is through using the interface reference variable and keep in mind objects are different from object reference variable here p is not an object it is just an object reference variable okay which is pointing to a program object in the memory okay now when we explicitly implement an interface okay like interface method in i1 or interface method in i2 when we explicitly implement them then the only way to invoke them is to use the interface reference variable you cannot invoke that on the class reference variable okay all right so that's called explicit interface implementation so if you look at it we have the same example here we are using the explicit interface implementation I mean, it's pretty much the same example that we have just seen okay and we know that when a class explicitly implements an interface member the interface member can no longer be accessed through class reference variable but only through interface reference variable look at this when we try to access this interface method you can only access that to the, through the interface reference variable you are typecasting the p uh, you know p variable to be of type interface one and then calling the interface uh, method similarly for interface two method and then actually another way to do that is instead of if you don't want to be typecasting what you can actually do is you can say interface i1 is equal to new program Because we know that from from the concept of inheritance uh, derived class, oh, we cannot do that. Interface maybe i1 is equal to new program, and similarly you can say i2 i2 is equal to new program, and you can say i1 dot interface method and i2 dot interface method. You can either do this or you can typecast. Okay. So let's go back. So, and also to keep in mind when we are explicitly implementing the interface members, 
you are not allowed to use any access modifiers okay and in fact this is a very common interview question if a class inherits from two interfaces and both the interfaces have the same method name how should the class implement the method for both the interfaces we using explicit interface implementation okay and there is a default implementation as well what do we mean by default implementation let's say for example I want my class to have a default implementation okay because when I create an instance of let's say if I say program P is equal to new program and then when I say P dot interface method I should be you know my default should be like interface one method okay I want to make this interface one method default in spite of two interfaces having the same method I want this method in this interface I want to be default so how do we do that it's very simple implement that member normally and the other one which you don't want to be default implement that explicitly so what I mean by that is in my class implementation I'm gonna say okay I'm gonna implement the interface one method normally so public void interface method so this class is now implementing this interface one method normally but whereas interface two method is implemented explicitly look at the interface name and no public access modifier okay so now when I go ahead and run this program when I say program P is equal to new program P dot interface method it, it sees this okay I need to invoke this method it invokes that so here we are making this interface method of this I1 interface default whereas this one is explicit if somebody wants to call this the only way they will be capable of doing it is by typecasting so typecast P to be of I, I2 type and then call the interface method so first one will call the interface one method and this one the second line will call the interface two method so when we go ahead and run that we get the same so we can have we can mix them default implementation and explicit interface implementation so obviously if you want to make one of the interface methods the default then implement that method normally and the other interface method explicitly this makes the default method to be accessible through class reference variable all right on this slide you can see some resources for asp.net and c-sharp interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day